Well, welcome everyone to the 2018 FES Center uh, update. Um, I think this video by itself does a pretty good job of summarizing the state of the FES Center. You know, the, the FES Center is all those people. It's all of you. You know, it's people that, that, that come from four different institutions. Now we have a home at the VA. We have an academic affiliate at Case. We have investigators at Metro Health Medical Center, at University Hospitals, and at the Cleveland Clinic. So, you know, what I'm going to talk about is everything that you do. You know, this is what I'm going to talk about today. It's your grants. It's your designs. You know, it's, it's your administrative magic that you do. It's physicians. It's scientists. It's engineers. You know, it's nurses. It's therapists. It's the participants in our studies who are the real heroes. It's our funding agencies. It's everybody that's watching today, really, is, is we are the FES Center. That's, that's how we define the FES Center. So I'm going to do my best today to try to summarize our activities over the past year and to let you know what we're all about. OK, so first, good place to start is our mission. You can, you can find these on our, on our, web, on our website. So, you can read this, but we are a very transdisciplinary group of people from all over the, the city in different disciplines doing different kinds of work. Um, we're very passionate about the work that we do, and we focus in, in areas largely related to, to neurological disorders. And we have a very highly collaborative uh, set of investigators that's been that way from the beginning. 28 years ago, Hunter, something like that, a long time ago, you know. So we continue to do that to this day. You know, our vision is to perform cutting edge research and engineering to develop, create, and create new uh, effective clinically available um, options for a wide range of different disorders. And to, and our mission is to develop nervous system interventions to compensate for natural neural function that's lost due to neurological disease and injury. Okay, our community. This is, this is what I, I started with, and I'm going to come back to it again. Um, we are a consortium. We, we have in, in our home is at the, the Lewis Stokes Cleveland VA Medical Center. Um, we're funded. Our programmatic activities are funded by, by the VA. But we have four other affiliates. Um, five other, oh no, four other affiliates. So, you know, from the beginning, uh, Case Western Reserve University has been our sort of our technical home. That's where a lot of the engineering and, and science occurs. Metro Health Medical Center has been a, a bastion for our rehabilitation activities and, and home to a lot of those activities um, as well as the VA. University Hospitals has a strong uh, sort of neural engineering, neurological bent. And most recently, the Cleveland Clinic joined us, and they have a very strong neurological institute. So these are our institutional partners, and they're, they're critical to the activities of our of our day-to-day uh, -day work. We have leaders, many of whom are here today. We have an executive committee that, uh, in the top row except for me, are our, our clinical um, leaders. Uh, Ron Rakers is the medical director, and he's at the, at the VA Medical Center. Marion Richmond, uh, Greg Nemunitis, and John, Jonathan Miller. The bottom row are engineers and scientists, again, from a variety of different uh, locations around town. These are the, the people that help, help guide me in the, in, the, in the direction of the center. And as you'll see, we'll have a few more roles coming up uh, in, in the coming year. <coughs> But really, the, the FES Center, again, is all of us. You know, we have, we have some base funding, some, some funding that, that runs our program, but the vast majority of our activities are done by you. And so I want to make sure to acknowledge that, again, the FES Center is all of us. It's not just me standing up here talking about what we're planning to do. It, it's, it's all of your activities. OK, what's our recipe? Uh, we've been pretty successful for a long time. So, this is my, my interpretation of this, and I hope, I hope it agrees with uh, what you think. So it's kind of backwards a little bit from how you might think these things work, but I think this is why we're special. 
Our final goal is to move to clinical applications quickly and safely. We want to do things in people that help them in their in their day-to-day -day lives. Okay. So this involves things like clinical trials, small clinical trials, large clinical trials, translation of products or of our ideas into products for the market. To get there, we have to build technology and systems that, are, that enable these kinds of applications. So, you know, the, this is how we, how we realize things. To build those technologies, we have to understand the mechanisms of diseases and injuries. And this is more in the science realm, okay? To, to do that kind of work, we have to build teams. The, the scientists need to know what the, what the mechanisms are of a disorder. The engineers design technology that can address it. The clinicians implement this and evaluate it. For, and firstly, we need to understand the clinical needs. There's an infinite number of projects that we could, we could pursue. Which ones do we pursue? We look for the ones that are going to have the, the, the largest and most immediate clinical impact. Okay, so this is our kind of our special sauce, so to speak. This is our recipe. Started many, many years before I was I I I the director of the center. And this is something that we have to we have to appreciate and we have to work to maintain. This is a this is an active process. This this doesn't happen by by accident. Okay, our activities. What how does the center accomplish these th this mission, these goals? So I'll summarize these. So first of all, we many of us here do research. So and many of us use electrical stimulation to do that research. So we, we work on disorders all around the body. We, we address things that have to do with movement, with brain injuries, with sensation, many things, okay? But collectively, we sort of cover the waterfront in terms of, of lost function following neurological disorders. And in, not surprisingly, our research clusters are, are organized in, in a way that reflects this. So in the middle here, technology is, is kind of the glue that holds us together in many respects. You know, all these clinical applications around the outside. These are the, the devices, the approaches, the, the techniques that we've developed over many years and apply to different kinds of, of clinical problems. So they, these uh, basically enable many, many of the clinical applications that are around this ring. Movement restoration has been um, sort of our foundational application and continues to this day. There's a lot of activity both in the development of new, new systems and in, the, in the, the, the translation of these into the, the clinical market. So there are many applications, specific applications, some of which are listed here. Pain mitigation has also been a, a pretty long-term application of, of electrical stimulation, both in our group and outside. And this has really gotten a boost in recent years with new techniques being developed, electrical block, for example, and, and, and other kind of neuromodulation approaches. And it's very timely in, in, in an era where, where opioid use is, is, is really high. This is maybe an option to prevent people from, from going down that path to begin with that have chronic pain. Autonomic systems is, uh, this is the neural control of all these internal body organs that, that are subconscious. You don't, you don't they, they just do their job day after day. Um, the disorders of the autonomic nervous system show up in many ways, high blood pressure, um, kidney disease, ma many other applications, or many other disorders that are increasingly being recognized as being treatable through interventions in the autonomic nervous system. There's still work that needs to be done here, both in terms of understanding mechanisms and even the structure of the autonomic nervous system, and also in devices that are capable of, of interacting with it. But this is a very exciting, new, rapidly growing area. And, and finally, brain health is a big kind of sprawling area that includes stroke. It includes Parkinson's disease and neuropsychiatry and 
epilepsy, and many other, many other disorders. This has been a part of our, of our work for quite a number of years now as well, and uh, it, it is a growing area recognized around the community now. There's, there's a bunch of new activities going on in brain health around the, the Cleveland community. So this is a very quick, sweeping view of the kind of research that you all do. And I, you know, I, I think it's very exciting. We, again, we, co we basically cover the waterfront in, in um, neurological disorders. And it's, it's very exciting times for, for this kind of work. OK, so what does the FES Center do to facilitate this kind of, of work? So we do, we do quite a bit. Um, First of all, one of our goals has always been to develop and sustain sort of a national leadership in rehabilitation and neural engineering. So some of these things I've talked about already, we've done a pretty good job at identifying clinical priorities. Um, the center works very well to maintain kind of a, a, a preeminent set of investigators in a comprehensive academic community. So we have the kind of partners and resources that we need in order to, uh, to be successful. We facilitate interventions that are first in man, so to speak. So these are, these are ideas that maybe have been developed over years, but we move them into clinical practice. And that is a pretty rare uh, attribute for research centers of, of our kind. And it's, it's one of our, our hallmarks. We're working, have been working for a number of years to build very strong relationships with industry. This industry is how we're going to affect the world in a big way. You know, we can develop interventions, but if they, if they sit in our labs, they don't, they don't help a lot of people. So building those relationships is, is uh, incredibly important. And finally, we are constantly looking for strategic uh, partnering opportunities with other institutions around the country, with our local um, uh, affiliates and, and other uh, companies around town. So this is in the sort of the national leadership realm. We also have a regional um, ecosystem to, uh, kind of nurturing that, that, we, that, we, that we do. So we always partner as best we can with local, with our local consortium members. We try to facilitate collaborations. So we have formal things, like we do concept reviews, and we have neuroprosthesis seminar series, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. We have neural nights that where they come together mostly social just to interact. Um, I get calls all the time trying to, to um, match people up. So we try to facilitate these kinds of collaborations. Behind the scenes, there's all kinds of sort of magic that happens that moves your money from one institution to another and from a third institution back to your home institution. There's other administrative things like personnel, like how, how do we split the cost of, of different staff members. And all this just, you, know, you might seem like it's a big hassle to you. Well, try it, try it on your own sometime. I mean, this is, this is done sort of below the radar, and I think to the point where we don't really even appreciate that it happens. But that, that's just sort of to, to keep the, the pressure down on, on, on working collaboratively. And finally, we do a lot of communication. You know, we have, we do this report to the community on a regular basis every year, right, every year, yep. That sort of is this comprehensive summary of everything we do. And it goes out to people all around the community and out into the, in the country. We have a website, which I'm going to talk about in a second, which has an enormous amount of information and, and resources on it. We do social media. We have a newsletter. We do a lot of things to get the word out about the FES Center. And finally, and certainly not uh, least important, is that we assist in the, in the success of all of you in, in, in the investigators. So we have, as you'll see in a second, a lot of trainees that are associated with the investigators in the FES Center. We do a lot of capacity building for the, for the field, for the country. And that involves a lot of mentoring. We have 
We have contracts with uh, regulatory affairs uh, groups and, and we can assist you in that. Um, we're using it now. Uh, I'm using it personally, so it's good. Again, we do fiscal and grants management, which is, uh, saves you a lot of headaches. We have medical illustration support. Uh, uh, Erica is here. We have statistical support. So these are things that are not maybe common uh, back in your home institution, but really provide you know, a, a professional, like having a medical illustrator put, put a couple of, of figures in, in your paper, in your grant, that really bring home the idea of the whole project in a picture is, is, is really valuable. It makes it a more professional look. Okay. One of our scientific highlights is our neuroprosthesis seminar series. Um, this has been going on for, for many years. And we've, we've always had great speakers. This year is, is really no exception. This is partially uh, advertisement, just partially, mostly, just to show the kind of people that we have coming and, and maybe I'll explain why. So last year, if you were paying attention, you probably noticed that most of our speakers were regional. They were from Pittsburgh and Michigan and Chicago. And it was an attempt to identify a core um, sort of Great Lakes, uh, you know, neural engineering rehabilitation group. And I think that might bear some fruit. And it's going to take a little time, but we, we, we've talked about that. This year, we reached out and we got people that maybe would be considered on the fringe of what we do, but will bring ideas to us that we, you know, that we might not otherwise see. So we have people that do imaging. There's several. There's people that do big data in neurological uh, disorders. There's people that do commercialization. There's one here, there's one here. We're gonna have an industry round table. Um, there's people that look at really big picture things. And Corey Bargeman is at the, the Zuckerberg uh, Chan initiative and led the brain initiative. So, you know, the, these are, try, this is kind of a, of a, of a hopefully a, a brain opening exercise. So, you know, you can, Come to these, you know, the dates are there. There are also many of them, not, not all are online. Depends on the person. But these are, there's a, there's a big archive of these and I'll, I'll come, maybe that's next. Yes. So before I go there, I just, again, the neuroprosthesis seminar series is a, is a gem that, that we do. And I, you know, I hope that we can continue to have, have this as a center for, for a sort of uh, open-minded thinking. <clears throat> All right, I, I want to bring a little attention to our website. And I personally am guilty of uh, forgetting from time to time just exactly how, how good this is. So I want to bring up a, a, a few things. So first of all, if you're interested in our research programs in detail, there's an immense amount of information there. We have videos from the, many of the investigators that, exp, you know, short videos that explain what they do in their research. It's very, if, you, if you're curious what somebody does, just go to the website and all you have to do is watch their video. It's a couple minutes long at most. But there's also a lot of other information about their work. We stream a lot of our uh, neuroprosthesis seminars. So if you're traveling or you have a, a colleague somewhere that, that you think might be interested, you know, it's very easy to do. You can just go to the web page. This is, I mean, I, I listed it out here, but there's a link on the web page so you can just click and watch the neuroprosthesis seminar. You can also go back and watch many of the ones from the past. There's an archive on there of, of many of our neuroprosthesis seminars. So if somebody came last year and you missed it and you wanted to see it, you can go right there. It's right on the on the FES Center website. There's a news section that you know all the latest things that have happened. You know, I noticed there were there was a whole bunch of things from October there, so these are kept up to date and they're relevant. If you're a part, if you if you're potentially interested in being a participant, there's a a, a tab on there for, uh, for 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 potential participants. You can look and see what studies are active. 
If you have studies that are active that aren't listed there, you can talk to Cheryl or, or Erica or someone and we can put them on there. It's a great way to get your, your uh, study advertised. Or if you're interested in participating, you can, you can look and see what's available. And there's even a very cool little what is FES video. So I, maybe most people here know what FES is, but this is a very simple, if, if, if your mother or grandfather or sister or somebody asks you, well, I don't even know what that is, you can, you can click on this there's a YouTube video here. You can get to it from the website that explains what happens in, in, uh, in FES. I, I think it's, very, it's a very useful thing. Um, we're also on, on uh, social media, so you can get to Facebook this way, you can get to Twitter. We're pretty active on, on these uh, platforms, so a lot of posts, quite a few followers and shares. So this, this gets the word out, and if you want to get the word out, just let us know. If you have something that you want to get the word out via the, the, um, the social media of the FES Center, just let us know. Okay, so I'm going to take a few minutes and kind of give a very high-level overview about your, pro your productivity over the last year. And I have to say, you guys are awesome again this year. It's, real, it's really great. Um, so this is our people. <coughs> so first of all, if you add those up, there are 203 of us that, that are associated with the FES Center. That's pretty impressive. You'll also notice that the clinicians have pulled ahead of the PhDs in terms of the investigators. I guess that's a good thing. No comments, but anyway, we have, we have quite a few clinicians and I, I think this just reflects what our, what, our, what our sort of focus is. We're trying to solve clinical problems and these teams are utterly uh, essential and, and I'm, I'm really actually glad to see this. So like I said, we have a lot of trainees. We have 11 postdocs and 54 PhD or MS trainees that are working with our investigators. That's a big number, okay? That's a lot of people that are learning about this kind of work. We wouldn't be able to do our work without our, our technical and clinical staff. They design devices, they, they um, perform experiments, they do uh, clinical evaluations. And just a few administrators, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff with six people, okay? All right, so kind of the, the number. So our research funding, again, you know, th this kind of enables all of our work, right? We have to have funding for our research projects, it's critical. It was exceptionally strong last year, $21.5 million over all of you. Um, 900,000 only was due to the FES Center. So most of the, the vast majority of this is from, from, from you. Um, again, presentations and pu publications from presentations, sort of our scholarly output was likewise quite high and very impressive. All right. Our funding comes from a variety of sources. This just breaks it out. We have quite a bit, you know, we're, we're now about 70% NIH. Um, the VA is here, and it's number, oh, 14%. Uh, State of Ohio, Department of Defense, private foundations. We have a pretty good uh, um, diversified portfolio, and it's, again, it's quite strong. So likewise, we have a significant number of, of, of patents that were issued, applications, invention disclosures. These don't tell the whole story of our impact. For example, they don't really tell you anything about clinical impact. But this is an easy, easily quantified way of showing that we're consciously trying to move our discoveries into products that can affect the, the clinical world. So keep that up. All right, so we have a few initiatives that, that I, I would like to, uh, to talk about now. So, I'm really, I, I, I'm happy that I can announce three initiatives that, for the, that start immediately for the current year. And these are all focused on deepening 
and expanding you know, the, the core attributes of the FES Center. So what, what, these are things that I think we need to do in order to move effectively into the future. Okay. So first, we're going to have an innovation seed funding program for, for this current year. Um, this is due to the generous support of the VARRND. Now uh, the centers all got a, a, a bump this year. We were told it's a one-time bump. And so we're going to do some one-time uh, funding for things that are gonna last for a long time. That's the, that's the overall goal, okay? So the idea is for you to tell me and the executive committee what we need to be doing that we're not doing, okay? And there are guidelines. Um, I put formal guidelines in the next couple of weeks, but very soon, because as you'll see, this has to be done quickly. So we have $100,000 total, and the, the, our idea is about ten to $20,000 per project. So that, that kind of gives you an idea. Nine months, just fiscal year, one-time funding that leads to long-term impact. That's the goal. You know, what, what can we do to change the, the trajectory of the FES Center in positive ways and substantively move it into the future? So what does our community need going forward as you see it today? This will be reviewed by the executive committee, these, these, app, these proposals, okay? So examples. For example, we had, I, ha I showed those research clusters. We had five of them. You could, you could use this to develop those programs. You, you could use them to write a big center proposal of your own in um, autonomic systems or in pain mitigation or in movement restoration, technology development, any of them, right? You, you, you could do something to develop those research cluster areas. You could partner. We have, we have a bunch of translational research programs. I see Steve Fenning is here, Coulter's one of them, but there's others. The CTSC has one, NCAI over, that's based at the Cleveland Clinic. There's uh, the CA in the, in the medical school. So think of ways that, that we could better move our discoveries into products. Propose something. And, and, and Tell us how, how you spend your money to make that happen. Or something that's entirely new, something that I, that I didn't list here. Something that's really innovative and is going to boost us into the future. Okay, so that's the first um, uh, initiative. The second one is professional development and leadership. So we already do some things in this respect. We have concept reviews. People get up and talk about their their proposed work and it sort of gets uh, gently uh, torn apart by, by, uh, by your colleagues. It's better for that to happen with your gentle colleagues than your anonymous reviewers. So we do this. We have strategic planning, which we intend to uh, expand in the coming year. So this is helping individual investigators determine the most um, fruitful directions for their work how we can um, steer the community to, to focus on bigger problems, for example. And you know, I really want to emphasize that these are important. Like, this is a way of having people that serve on study sections and are involved in advisory boards around the country can apply their expertise to our issues. Okay, so you know, I, I, I do this all the time, and I know many of you do too. I go and give advice to other people, and I think we could, we could do better about helping ourselves. Okay, grant writing. So if, if people are interested in going to many courses and other kinds of instructions on grantsmanship, we can make that happen, okay? Management and leadership development. So Cheryl Dudek and Andy Cornwell have been working very hard on identifying ways that we can provide sort of some leadership and management training to people. And you can think of this in many ways. So it doesn't mean you're going to run for president of the United States or FES Center director, although you could. 
it's, it's more for transitioning from, you know, understanding how to transition from running your own research projects to running a big lab or to have complicated uh, relationships across the city. Um, this could be if you're new or if you've been around for a while. Um, and they've worked, to, Andy and uh, Cheryl have worked with the Weatherhead School. And we can probably accommodate like 10 or more people to get a certificate in, in some kind of, of management and leadership development, in, not some kind, in their management and leadership development program. So I think this is really important, uh, you know, and I'll get to that in a second. And finally, the third initiative is needs assessment. And this, is, this means multiple things. Um, and again, we already do this, at least I hope, in, in our individual labs. We have discussions with our colleagues about what it is we should be pursuing. But this involves, obviously, clinical populations. What do clinical populations want? What kind of, of uh, interventions are they looking for? What kind of changes in their life are they looking for? It involves our industry partners. As I said earlier, if we do things that are uh, orthogonal to what our industry partners are doing, we're kind of doomed. We have to eventually steer things back around and, and align ourselves with them. And they all have strategic plans. They're very difficult to figure out sometimes. They're not going to tell you. But we're going we're to work in the FES Center to try to align with our industry partners. Otherwise, we, we cannot get our, our interventions out into the world. Okay. I have mechanisms of action. So what, what don't we know scientifically that is preventing us from treating certain disorders? This is what this is about. And we have a surprisingly large number of people that are working on basic science. And I think it behooves us to, under, to know what we don't know. You know. Some things we accept, other things we just don't know. So we, we need to make that more of an emphasis and write it into a into a list of priorities for things to address. Funding agencies, and I put bi-directional. You know, in, in some respect, we need to align with our funding agencies. They have, they have published priorities, and again, we would, it would not be very smart from a fiscal perspective to not try to uh, address some of those needs. But it's also our job to influence the funding agencies. They're looking for uh, suggestions for things that need to be done. And we can't just go there and say, well, I think brain interfacing is the most important thing ever, right? Because that's what I do. You have to, we, have to, we have to do this in a, in a systematic, uh, quantitative way. So again, these are our clients, so to speak, and we need to make sure that we know their interests and we determine what those are. So we're, we're going to put some effort into this in the coming year. So. I just list these. These are our three initiatives for the for the current year. You know, I, again, I think these are these these address topics that are uh, really core to what we, the FES Center has always been about, and I think we need to be about in the future, and will help us figure out five years from now what should we be doing, ten years from now, what's our best guess right now, what should we be doing, you know, who will be leading these initiatives five years from now, 10 years from now? You know, will they be prepared to lead th these kinds of efforts? You know, I don't think this happens by accident. You, you, and there needs to be a little bit of a, of a you know, a, a directed effort. So, you know, and finally, how are we going to organize our, ourselves as a center to help address the, the, the desires of, of our constituents? So this is why these initiatives are being offered. And I strongly urge you to consider them. I think you know this is th these are really really important things for our community. Okay, so I have just you know in in the last couple minutes here, I, I, I want to talk about call to action. This is you know things that I think that we we need to do. So, first of all, you have to remember that we are the FES Center. It's not some abstract. Uh, building off of the side of campus or something. I mean, it's all of us. It's you and it's me, okay? And so, and it's all of our stuff that, you know, our papers and our grants and everything that make this a cohesive thing. So, you know, it's your expertise. 
It's your identification of clinical needs. It's our research that, that many of us do. It's the technology that we develop. And it's our deployment. I mean, our actual you know, evaluation of these, of these innovations in people. So this is a reminder. It's been my theme so far. We are the FES Center, right? So it, it's all of us. So I have some requests as I, as I end my, my talk here. So the first one is engage. I mean, really, engage. You know, you can engage in formal activities, and maybe I'm speaking, you know, singing to the choir here. You guys are here, right? We have formal activities um, that help maintain and build our community. So participate in them when, when they come. I think, I think you'll find them way more useful than maybe you have in the past. Do informal things. You know, offer to help a colleague who needs some help. You know, somebody who, who wants to have somebody read their grant or a paper before it goes in. You know, that's a, that's a simple, you know, you're not going to get credit for that, but it's part of being a, a, in, in, in a community. Reach out to new investigators. Same thing. Somebody helped you get started. It's time for you to help somebody else get started. Okay. If you're an engineer or a scientist and you're working with a clinician, Go and meet with them. Seven in the morning, nine o'clock at night, across town. That's the only way it's gonna work. If you're a clinician, take a little time to try to make things work as best you can. You know, it's tough times for these kind of, uh, of, of arrangements. Clinicians are busy, they're being driven, uh, funding is difficult. We have to, you have to go a little bit harder. So go out of your way to make these happen. You'll be glad you did. When you're around in, the, in, our, in our medical centers in particular, talk to the participants. Now they're people and you can talk to them and f talk to their caregivers, their, the person that's with them, the therapist that's working with them, a physician that's there doing an exam. Find out what their priorities are, what their needs are. And ask me how you can engage. You know, don't, you know, don't say, well, I don't understand what I can do. Just, just call me up or, or send me an email. Say, what can I do? There's a lot of things that you could do. Okay, you know, we're only limited by time, not by need, okay? All right. Oh, that said, no, I went the wrong way, I guess. Oh, that was, that was still one. I'm sorry. Request number two is an easy one. Take advantage of our unique community. I'm not sure everyone recognizes what we have. We have a very rare community here in, in, the, in Cleveland in the FES Center. You know, it's, it's very vibrant. We have a lot of activities. We have so many people working in this area. And, and you know, neurotechnology and rehabilitation, it's really quite a powerhouse. And people that come here and talk about us uh, are much more uh, raving about how great we are than we are. So I just want you to understand that, that it, we have a great community. We have incredible depth in engineering and science, especially in, the, in, in these neurological and rehab areas. I mean, again, I don't think, you, maybe you don't appreciate this, but we have huge depth there. We have huge depth in rehabilitation. We have two centers, two medical centers at the VA and, and at Metro that are like world leaders in rehabilitation. We have uh, the, the University Hospitals and the Cleveland Clinic, which are, you know, their neurological capabilities are, are second to none. You know, take advantage of that. Maybe even more importantly is citywide, there's an affinity for doing these kinds of transdisciplinary things. You're not going to find that in many places. And we have the advantage that we're all really close. You know, people think that, that Metro is a long way away. You ought to go to a lot of these places, that, that especially state schools, where it might be 200 miles away for their, uh, their medical affiliate. We have a unique situation here. And, People want to work together, and we, sh we should take advantage of that. And we already have a lot of existing 
relationships across all these institutions, across all these disciplines. Many of you are here today. You know, we, ha we really have a lot of existing relationships that if you're new in the group or you want to go into a new area, just talk to people. You know, you can talk to me and I'll, and I'll, and I'll set you up. You should be really proud of, of this. I mean, it's, it's taken a long time to develop this, Hunter, you especially. You know, th th this is really a unique situation. Um, finally, we have multiple translational research mechanisms in town. I, I mentioned them before, the Coulter program, the CTSC. You have opportunities to take that next step and move some idea into, into, a, into a product, at least start that, that, that motion. Okay. Request number three. Let us help you. We have a lot to offer in the FES Center. You know, the, I'll start here. There's huge opportunities in our field, in, in the kind of work that we do. You know, there's really never been a better time. You know, I was asked this question at, at a meeting I was at when I was speaking, and I said, really, there's never been a better time in our field. There's a lot of new techniques that are available, and not, you know, the, a recognition that Electrical stimulation can be used for many things that it never really was thought of before. So, you know, these are things that we're doing, and we, 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 need, to, we need to double down on that and really, really go for it, okay? We have new techniques, those optical stimulation techniques, for example, that have promise in areas that have been very difficult. You know, you can stimulate little tiny unmyelinated nerves better than you can big myelinated nerves. That's that's great. That's a complementary um, technique. Okay, so there are challenges. I mentioned some of them already. There's always funding challenges. It's uncertain. That's the biggest thing. Actually, funding is okay. You know, in general, we're doing we're doing pretty well. I think in general it's okay, but it's uncertain, and that's what that's what bothers people. You have a, a community here to help us distribute some of that risk, okay? There's always un uncertainty about health care. You know, we're developing things that aren't always inexpensive. And that's a big driver. And maybe we need to think about this. You know, how, how do we address cost? You know, but that, that's an that's a, that's a uncertainty. I already brought up the clinician scientists, their research time is being squeezed. So these are things though that you have a large center, the FES center, that is eager to help work these things out. Can't always, we can't work miracles, but we have the, sort of the benefit of having a big source of, of people, investigators, that want this to work. And, and I think that, that you need to take you know, take advantage of this. So, you know, this is, this is all very exciting to me that, that, that we're here in a place where we have a center that can make, can help address these problems. Okay, so that ends my remarks. Thank you. I, I'd like to thank a few people, Mary Bucket and Erica Woodrum, Cheryl Dudek and Andy Cornwell who were instrumental in helping put this together. And I really want to thank all of you, first of all, for your contributions. Like I said, you know, I just got up here and sort of spoke the, the contributions. I didn't do most of them. I'm just summarizing them. I want to thank you for coming here um, to, to learn about what, what the center is all about and what our plans are for the coming year. And we're going to have a reception outside in a couple minutes. But first, we're going to get a photograph. We try to document what happens from year to year. So we're going to lock the doors. No, I'm just kidding. And we're going, to, we're going to get a picture of everyone. So thank you very much for your attention.